Hello, my dear friends! Здравствуйте, мои дорогие друзья! Меня зовут Вероника. My name is Вероника. And I am a professional Russian teacher, and of course I am a Russian native speaker based in Moscow. So today at this Russian lesson I would like to teach you how to talk about Russian summer in Russian language. I think this topic is really important and useful, especially now, because now we have the best season ever. It is summer. And we will start from basic words. I will show you. Of course, we start from the word лето. Лето. It means summer in Russian. And here you can ask me, why do you write лето? But suddenly, you Russian people and Russian learners should pronounce it like лето. <laughs> it's quite easy. It is Russian phonetic rule that claims if O is in unstressed position, it should be pronounced like A. That's why we say лето, and it is a noun. So, in English, you have summer as a noun and summer as an adjective. I mean, you do not change the word, but in Russian language, of course, we change everything. So, лето, it is noun, and if you want to use this word as an adjective, you say летний, летний, summer, летний день, summer day. Okay, and let's continue with another picture. Загорать. Загорать. Загореть. Загореть. It means sun bath, to take sun bath, yeah? And here, again, the same story. Загорать, we say, but we write загорать. Again, the same Russian phonetic rule. Or unstressed should be pronounced like a. Ah, that's why we say загорать. And here, maybe you can ask me, why do you have one word in English to sunbath and in Russian you have two different but very similar words? Загорать, it is imperfective verb. It means that you take sun regularly, yeah, on a regular basis. And if you did it once, yeah, it was a completed action, you say загореть, it is perfective verb aspect. So, if you go to the beach quite often, like maybe two times in a week, you should use the first загорать. But if you just suddenly went to the beach once yesterday and uh, it is unusual for you, you would say the um, last verb загореть. Yeah. Okay, and um, the noun is загар. Загар, it means ten. And I wonder, what do you think? Um, is it popular in your country to sunbath? Because in Russia, yes, it is, you know, uh, summer here in Russia is quite short and not very warm not very hot, like in Italy, for example, or in Spain, maybe. Yeah, uh, that's why we appreciate when our skin is tanned. It can show that you are quite a rich person that was on the sea, yeah, or at the sea, yeah. Okay, um, I mean at the resort. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, let's talk about new words in Russian language. Плавать. Плавать means to swim. Купаться. Купаться. Here the translator, um, translator uh, shows me that the translation is quite similar to swim or to bath. I mean, there is quite a big difference between плавать and купаться in Russian. Плавать the first verb you use when you really swim. It's like sportive action, maybe. And kupatsa, it's more like having fun in water. I mean, you can sit in water or you can play some active games. It's not like really swimming, but 
to do something <laughs> in the water near the coastline, near the shore. Okay, I hope you understand and also you can use kupatsa when you take a bath in Russian, yeah? I mean in your bathroom at home, <laughs> kupatsa. But obviously you cannot swim, plavat in bathroom. So, <laughs> okay, uh, let's continue with another picture. Plavit rybu. Lavit rybu to fish. And this activity is very, very super popular here in Russia and it is men activity. Normally men say that <laughs> women should stay at home and do not disturb men. It's only for men in Russia, normally. Um, yeah, <laughs> of course you can go fishing even in winter but in summer it is more popular and the noun is rybalka rybalka and all these two expressions in russian they come from ryba ryba means fish okay ah and there is one more interesting fact i know that in western countries i don't know how is the situation in asia let me know if you know something. I mean that in Russia you do not have to um, have a license. I mean, I heard that in USA and in Germany, for example, if you want to fish, you need to pass the exam and to buy some license. In Russia, no, you just <laughs> take your tools, take your nets and everything that you need. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You don't take your nets. Nets in Russia are forbidden, obviously, but you just take your... How is it in English? Spinning, maybe? I mean, this tool to fish. You just take this and other small tools and you go for a um, lake or river or sea and you do not have to pass the exam or to pay for a license. Let me know how it is in your country and if you can fish. Interesting for me. And uh, yeah, let's talk about new Russian words. Sabirat gri bi i yagadi. Sabirat gri bi i yagadi. To collect mushrooms and berries. I know again that in foreign countries it is quite unusual to collect mushrooms and berries, but in Russia it's kind of <laughs> national sport. I mean, every Russian person knows if it is edible or poison poisonous mushroom, if you can eat it or it is dangerous for your health. I mean, I am a champion. <laughs> I love to collect mushrooms when I'm in the forest or at my dacha. I just run in the forest with big, big eyes and I just <laughs> collect all the mushrooms, like kilograms. And they are very tasty and quite useful for your health if you do not eat them too much. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, I heard that in Western countries, I don't know how it is in Japan, I had lots of students from Japan and most probably they told me something about this activity in their country. I think that people in Japan, they just don't know a lot about mushrooms. Yeah, so they see a mushroom and they do not know if it is good or bad if you can eat it or not and uh, yeah in russia you do not have to pay anything you just go to the forest and you just take mushrooms collect mushrooms let me know how is the situation in your country very interesting for me and we continue with another new portions of russian words Sajat agarod Sajat agarod to plant a vegetable garden. That's interesting again that in Russian language we have two words for garden. We have sad, sad, 
this word in Russian we use for uh, planting for the place where we plant uh, trees or fruit or maybe flowers, yeah, berries. But if you talk about vegetables, you use another word in Russian. You use agarod. Agarod. And here, again, you need to be super careful because we have two interesting Russian phonetic rules here in this Russian word. You have pre or, and only the last one you read as an or. The first two or you read like a. Agarod because only the last one is under the stress. And the last D, according to Russian phonetics system, you should read like T. When you see D in the end of the Russian word, you pronounce it like T. Agarod, not Ogorod. <laughs> okay, and let's talk about another. Oops. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk a little about climate and weather. Жарко. Жарко. It means hot and it is Russian adverb. But if you want to say hot as an adjective, you say another word and you change the ending. Yeah? Жаркий день. Жаркий день. Hot day. And this adjective has three genders, yeah, masculine, feminine, neuter, and plural form, yeah. <laughs> so, in English, you have one word, hot. In Russian, we have five different words, four adjectives and one adverb. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. Жара. Жара means heat. And the root is the same. Жарко, жарки, жара. The root is жар. And by the way, the same root we have in the word in the Russian verb жарит. Жарит, to fry or to roast. Yeah, Because when you fry, it is really hot. So you say жарить картошку, to fry um potato, for example. And the next word is тепло. Тепло means warm and again it is Russian adverb. Here again we have a very interesting Russian phonetic um, thing because this е in the first syllable we pronounce like e, and the story is quite similar when Ye is in unstressed weak position, you pronounce it like e. Tiplo. <laughs> I hope that you understand. If you don't understand anything what I'm talking about, just let me know in the comments below. I always read them and I always answer. And if you think that my Russian lessons are useful and helpful for you, you can, of course, support my Russian channel with a um, generous donation. I am always happy when I see some money that hit my account and uh, I don't waste this money for me. All this money, they go to the development of my YouTube channel. I try to improve my content or my technical equipment and my old subscribers, they know that I had an um, old terrible camera with awful um, quality and only thanks to your donations I bought a new camera. <laughs> and of course you can hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and we continue our Russian lesson. And uh, I'm going to talk about how to say warm in Russian as an adjective. Tiopli vetir. Tiopli vetir means warm wind. And now let's talk about sun. We have two words. Sonce, sonce and solnishka. Solnishka. First, sonce means sun. I mean this yellow circle in the sky, not a boy. <laughs> and solnishka, it's diminutive form. More a nice way to say sun, solnishka. 
And here, again, you need to be quite careful and accurate <laughs> because in Russian, uh, you know that Russian language has more consonant letters than vowels. That's why we have lots of consonant letters in some words close to each other, like in the word son tse. Here we have three Russian consonants close, yeah? L and T. And in this situation, normally, we skip some of these words, letters. I mean, we do not pronounce them. So we write son tse, but we say son tse. This L is silent, okay? And now let's continue and we will talk about sun. Solnichna, solnichna, it means sunny. Again, you see that this last O we pronounce like A, solnichna, because this O is in unstressed position. And uh, sonce svetit, sonce svetit, sun shines. And we have in Russian very beautiful name. Svetlana, Svetlana, it means light uh, girl, because Svetit, this is the verb that means to shine, to be light, to give light, yeah, to be in, to be a ray, I don't know if it sounds okay in English, but in Russian, kak, yeah, it's quite okay. And uh, let's continue. So... Here, many, many foreigners who learn Russian, they make this mistake. When you talk about vacation, you have two different words. You have kanikuli. Kanikuli, this is vacation for Russian kids or any <laughs> kids in the world that have this summer or winter break. I mean, wait, then they, when <laughs> they don't need to go to school for lessons. But for adult people in Russian, for a vacation, you say отпуск, отпуск, yeah? Каникулы is for kids, отпуск is for adult people, okay? And I wonder, uh, let me know if in English you, or in your mother tongue, you also have two words or you just say one word for vacation. And the next Russian verb is quite essential if you want to talk about summer, because summer it's the season when many people want to rest, yeah? And to rest in Russian is at the hat. At the hat. I know that this word is quite difficult to pronounce for foreigners who learn Russian, but let's try at the hat. At the hut. Okay, let's continue with another Russian word. And <laughs> here is the longest one. One of the longest, yeah. Putishestvavat. Putishestvavat. To travel. And the next one. Hadit v pahod. Hadit v pahod. To go camping. By the way, um, now Russian language takes lots of uh, foreign words from other languages, mainly from English, of course. So in Russian, we also have this noun, camping. And in Russian, it sounds like camping. Camping. <laughs> By the way, I never tried camping, so I appreciate my comfort. I love nature but I appreciate my com comfort and let me know if you ever tried to go camping and what was your impression. Did you like it and why? And didn't you like it maybe and why? Very interesting for me because this summer I would like to try to make to go camping but still I'm not sure because you know I love comfort. I cannot sleep in a tent I guess. For me it's like Mm. Incredible. <laughs> okay, and um, let's continue. Plash. Plash means beach. Picnic. Picnic. 
this word is very similar to English origin picnic, yeah, picnic, we just um, change the stress in the Russian word. Okay, and let me know, by the way, what is your favorite summer activity? What do you like? You can write it in the comments below. And it would be awesome if you would write this in, in not in English, but in Russian. You can practice Russian here yeah, on my channel and you write anything in Russian and I will correct your mistakes if you have some and I will explain why it is a mistake. So yeah, feel free <laughs> to practice Russian here. And uh, let's continue. Oh, 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 not this one, but this one. <laughs> Yeah, now let's talk about technical equipment a little. Ventilator. 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 Conditioner. 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 Um, here I live in my own apartment and I have to pay for my mortgage only for years and I'm quite happy because I always wanted to live in my own apartment and uh, yeah still here um i have a lot of work to do i mean a lot of repair should be i mean it's absolutely new apartment but i want to make a new wallpapers and to buy a new ceiling new doors yeah i made a design and the first design was so bad and now i want to waste some more money for better uh, design and yeah, I still don't have conditioner. Conditioner. So the thing number one is to buy <laughs> conditioner. And let me know if you have conditioner in your country and if you can live without conditioner in your climate or it is impossible. So in Russia, I live in Moscow. It's quite okay to live without conditioner, but uh, sometimes it's really hot inside not even hot but dushna i forgot this word in english i mean ah stuffy i think stuffy when it is hot and a little bit not enough air yeah in russian we say dushna okay and let's continue veyer veyer means a fan and it is this beautiful asian thing like when you open it like this and you can make like this veyer in russian and now let's talk about summer fruits so yeah in russia mm, for example watermelon arbus arbus you can eat this berry in russia only in summer so you cannot find arbus in our stores and shops and markets in winter or if you find <laughs> arbus in winter in russia it means it is bad quality yeah so now it is leta it is summer and it is time to eat arbus <laughs> okay let's continue hmm wait a second it doesn't work anymore what happened It works. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's continue. Now you can talk about berries. Strawberry in Russian is klubnika. Klubnika. And cherry, I don't know if you have it in your country, but in Russia we have two different kinds of cherries. So we have vishnya, it is sour and a little bit bitter. Um, and it is dark Bordeaux color um, and it, also we have Cherishnya, it is sweet cherry, so I prefer Cherishnya and it can be more light uh, color, it can be yellow or orange or dark red color, like vermilion color, yeah, okay, Cherishnya and again, here the stress is on the second year. That's why the first year we pronounce like E. Chi Rishnya. 
Okay. No, again, it doesn't work. No, it works. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, now let's talk about melon. Melon in Russian is dynia. What did I say? <laughs> dynia. Dynia. Melon. Yezhevika. Yezhevika. Blackberry. This is my favorite berry. I remember uh, when my grandma lived in Belarus. This is a small country. Um, yeah. Belarus. And it is a very beautiful country. I love this country. And um, there was a lake and the old uh, rail rails, I mean railway road, yeah, iron road, um, and there were lots of wild blackberry bushes and we ate this and it was so tasty and adorable. One of my best memories from my childhood. I love Yezhevika. And here if you want to talk about oops <laughs> about Russian phonetics, you need to remember if you see this Russian letter Ye in the beginning of the Russian word, you should pronounce it like Ye, not like E. So many foreigners who speak Russian, they try to say Ezhevika. No, it is Yezhevika. And uh, let's continue and talk about some more interesting Russian words. Sunglasses. It is very difficult and quite a long word. Sanse za shitnye achki. Sanse za shitnye achki. Sanse za shitnye achki. Try to say it fast. <laughs> and let me know in the comments below what is your success. I mean, can you pronounce this Russian word or not possible? So, Sanse za shitnye, this word consists of two Russian words. The first one is Sonce. Sonce, it means sun, and zashitnye, it comes from the word zashita. Zashita means um, defense. So literally it is glasses that defend you from sun. Sonce zashitnye achki. And let's talk about ice cream. Marozhenye. Marozhenye. And this word is cognate to Russian Santa Claus. So in Russia we call Santa Claus as Dead Maros, and the literal translation is Grandfather Frost. So yeah, Maros, Frost, Marozhene, ice cream, something frozen, yeah. <laughs> and let me know what is your favorite ice cream. I, <laughs> you know, my profession is to teach. So, I speak a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, here is my cat, Marusia. Yeah, so, yeah, she's right here. <laughs> yeah. So, Marozhene comes from Maroz, Frost. Okay, uh, yeah, and I wanted to say that I speak a lot because of my profession. That's why my um, throat, <laughs> I think you say throat, in English is quite weak. So it means if I eat ice cream, I can be easily sick. So I try not to risk and I just don't eat marojene, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, and let's continue. Yeah, here is sunscreen and I found as many words as you <laughs> should know. Крем от загара. Крем от загара. This is the first way how to say sunscreen in Russian. Or you can just easily say sunscreen, sunscreen, or sunblock, sunblock. These two words, um, of course, they came from English language and they are quite new. I mean, old people, maybe they, I mean, Russian people, maybe they don't use these words or they don't know these words but they exist <laughs> and uh, next the longest is sanse za shitni krem sanse za shitni krem or you can say sonse za shitni krem 
Um, and it means, again, uh, we talked about um, sunglasses and the same word we used there. Солнце защитные очки. So it means the cream that protect you from the sun. Солнце means sun and защита it is defense or protection. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I do not know the difference between protection and defense. So if you know, just let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I found the opportunity to improve my Russian by your, not Russian, my English by your comments. So feel free to correct me if I say something totally wrongly and not understandable. And uh, to make a barbecue in Russian, жарить шашлыки. Жарить шашлыки. And this word жарить literally it means to fry or to roast. And it is a cognate, as we already told, uh, to Russian word жарка, hot. And this is a very traditional Russian activity in summer to go to the dacha. Ездить на дачу. Ездить на дачу. It's a big Russian cultural concept and maybe one day I will show you my dacha. It's amazing place. So beautiful lost in the forest uh, on the river bank with an amazing banya it's kind of russian sauna but humid yeah, banya so one day uh, when i go there for my summer holidays my summer vacation i will show you you will love this vlog i'm definitely sure <laughs> okay and i have two more uh, pages to discuss Wait a second. Now let's talk about summer uh, clothes. Kupalnik, kupalnik, swimsuit and bikini, bikini swimsuit too. And two of these words you use only for a woman, woman or for a girl. And for men, like swimming trunks, you say plavki, plavki. And uh, yeah, I traveled in um, some European countries and um, other countries, yeah. And I know that in Western tradition, it is more appropriate to wear not some swimming trunks, but uh, longer shorts, yeah. <laughs> I heard that only gays can wear swimming trunks in Western countries. But in Russia, it's totally normal to wear swimming trunks for heterosexual men. I mean, it's not a problem for them at all. And it doesn't mean they are gay and they are looking for a gay partner. So let me know if I am right. If in Western countries, you do not wear swimming trunks and you use swimming shorts. <laughs> really interesting for me because in Russia, we... Mm, don't think about this, yeah? <laughs> okay, and the last one... Oops, disappeared. <laughs> Again, about clothes that you wear in Russian summer. Шляпа. Шляпа means hat. So you say the word шапка and you wear this uh, when it is really cold outside in the street and when it is more warm, you wear шляпа. Шляпа. And uh, shorts in Russia is shorty, shorty, yeah? So, my dear Russian learners, I do hope that this Russian lesson was interesting and useful for you. And, of course, if you think so, you can support me with your generous donations. I'm always very happy, as I already said, when I see some money and it helps me to improve my content so yeah and of course feel free to hit the like button subscribe to my channel спасибо за просмотр thank you for watching увидимся скоро see you soon bye bye пока пока